All right. <clears throat> We're talking AI and copyright, okay? AI and copyright law. Is your book brand business protected? And uh, this training is in light of all the new things that are happening around AI. And a lot of people are afraid. A lot of people are wondering whether or not if I use AI a little bit, will I own the book or will I own the writing? If I use AI a lot, will I use, own the writing? So in this training, what I'm gonna be doing is addressing a lot of those legal concerns and legal questions. But before I do that, I gotta do what all lawyers do who are teaching, and that is they issue that disclaimer, right? While I'm a lawyer, I am not your lawyer in this particular case. Everything here is educational information. <laughs> and uh, business coaching and should be considered that way. And then I think the disclaimer goes on to say, if you have specific situations, then I would encourage you to seek legal counsel on that specific <laughs> issue. Okay, I hate doing those things. I hate them, I hate them. But you, you guess you just have to do them, right? Okay, um, but if you have any questions that I don't answer while I'm sharing, then we'll I'll get clarification when I get to the to the end of all of this, okay? So I'm quite sure you might have some questions that you've written down, but I wanna answer them. Okay, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, these large learning modules, okay? What is it all about? And how does that affect my copyright or my intellectual property when I'm writing a book, tell, building a brand, or, uh, or creating a business? Okay, first off, we, we need to understand what is intellectual property, okay? And people still get this with a little fumble up. You know, they get to thinking patents are copyrights and trademarks are patents and so forth. But as a writer, <laughs> there are three main categories of uh, copyright. There are three main categories of intellectual property, okay? Copyright, trademarks, trade secrets, and patents, okay? Now, copyright, trademark, and patents, but then you also have trade secrets. But what we're going to be talking about is copyright. Copyright has everything to do with your literary writings, things that you write, things that we uh, put in some type of fixed form, okay? That's copyright. Now, when we think about copyright, we got to think about what is a writing or what is writing, okay? The writing has been defined by the law and by the courts that a writing is any thought that has been put in some type of a fixed form, okay? So let's just let's just break it down. A writing, of course we know that a writing is something that you write with a pencil and a pen and a piece of paper, but that's, that's a given. But a writing can also be a audio recording, okay? If you record something on, a, on your phone in audio, that's a recording, that's a writing because it's in fixed form. Okay, that's the beauty. It's, it's your thoughts put in fixed form. A video can be considered a writing, okay? Uh, uh, a big screen movie, anything that's a thought that's in the head that can be put in some type of fixed form, that's a writing, okay? Now, the law that, that, that really covers all of this is Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8 of the Constitution, where Congress gives creators and authors exclusive ownership of their rights, of their intellectual property or their stories. Now, having said that, we want to talk about your book. Let's get straight to the book. When you use AI to write a book, what does Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8 say? The writings of humans. It does not say the writings of a computer. Therefore, AI is a computer. That's that's computer generated information that's out here. And as a general rule, as of the time of this teaching, AI cannot, AI generated content cannot be copyrighted. Okay? Now, but but there's some explanations to go along with that. But that understand that as the general rule, and now that should give those of us who are writers and creators, a sense of relief, because a lot of people are just afraid, but I would encourage people not to be afraid. I would say lean in, because now with this AI, you can do a lot of things faster. You can do a lot of things more efficiently. 
because what you put into the these large learning modules or AI, it cannot in and of itself be copyrighted, but your original work that you put into the machine can be copyrighted. So if you write a paragraph about your life and you put it in AI and it pulls out that paragraph and write it different, restructure it different, that's your original copyright. That's the main thing that writers need to know. If you put your whole manuscript in AI and decide that you want to have it edited chapter by chapter, paragraph by paragraph, write this better, man. that is your original work because the work of you creating that story was yours from the very beginning. Now, where people run into danger at is if they ask AI, write me a book, write me a 25 page book and then AI spits out this 25 page book. Now, some of the possible challenges is that that book may look like somebody else's book that did the same thing. And if the two of you decide that you want a copyright on that, that is not, you won't be able to win that copyright because you drew out 100% of your book from AI and that type of material produced of itself is not copyrightable, okay? All right, so that's the main thing right there. Now, here, here okay, so so let me let me give you some of the concerns though. The, some of the concerns is uh, if, if there's uh, plagiarism and someone is claiming, if you plagiarize, what I just said, if there's plagiarism or if somebody else's work is copied or you might want to think about ethical concerns and are just letting people know, hey, I'm using AI. I used AI to edit, to proofread, and to if you let people know about that, then people are going to be all right. It's up to them to decide whether they want you to take on your material or not, okay? All right, and when I get to the, at the end, I'm going to give you some best practices and ways. I'm going to give you at least five ways that I use AI on a regular basis, all right? Building a brand, growing a business, strategies to turn your book into a, a successful business using AI. Okay, so first off, if you are writing a book, that book, the first step you should do with the book is register the copyright. That's the first thing. When you register your copyright, now you have originality on the work that you put in the Cong Library of Congress. Copyright.gov. You should you you probably familiar with that one. Copyright.gov. That's step number one. And when you put your information out there to copyright.gov, it's registered. Now, let's just say you come after that and build a course based on that book. That work is already that's just copyrighted. Now, if you put this course out there and you change it up and add more portions to it and sections to it, then you can go and register that course as well and then have the course protected. So now your whole brand here is being protected as you go because you started the foundation of your business, which was your story or your book copyrighted. And that's the step number one. And that's the primary or the main step. Okay. All right. Now, even though I'm sharing a lot of thoughts of so most of my thoughts such teachings here is going to be focused heavily on copyright and heavily on books. There are other aspects of intellectual property that may come into play. So if you're ever uneasy about anything to do with your copyright or your IP or using AI, I would always say ask questions of legal counsel or ask someone a question that would know about it so that you can be at peace. Because a lot of times if you're feeling some kind of way, there's a reason why you are feeling that way. All right. Now. Intellectual property guidelines. Here again, I want to say copyright.gov. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to share my screen and put this into the training because I want you, I want to share you, you know, I people used to say a hack. I don't, I don't really like using the word hack, but uh, uh I'm gonna show you a helpful, helpful strategy here that's very good. If you want a short course, copyright.gov, copyright.gov. You go here and here you do your registration, you know, you're right here. And then you go here and you create a, go into the work portal right there. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. now here's something else right here. That's golden, man. This is golden right here. You can do a short course on this. 
right here. Look at this. Registering process time and frequently asked questions. Okay, let's see. Now, why is that going into Adobe? Okay, processing times and frequent asked questions. I don't know why it's going into Adobe, but but that, that's that, there it is right there. Registration. Okay. Registration processing time, frequently asked questions. You know, how does copyright office measure pro me measure processing time? How long does uh, a registration take when it's registered? How can I ensure the claims to proceed? You know, there you go. Okay, so that's those are questions right there. But I want to go to another. Uh, I want to go to another section there, and I want to go to those uh, frequently asked questions on the copyright.gov site because uh, COPY, that's a very, very uh, a resourceful place to go. Very, very resourceful place to go, okay? So here we go. I'll share my screen again and uh, get this in the record right here. Right here, okay. So here we are right here, copyright.gov again. And I wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom and I wanna come over here to the left right here and here we go, frequently asked questions, okay? And we'll click on this right here and look right here. This is golden right here, okay? This is golden. And a lot of times it's just as simple as this. Just come right here and you're gonna get great information, great information, okay? Copyright in general and what does copyright protect? So let's go right there. Let's just go right there. What does copyright protect? Let's look at it. What does copyright protect? Can I copyright my website? Yes. Can I copyright my domain name? Uh huh. Let's let's. How do I protect the recipe? Okay. Uh uh. uh how do I protect my idea? Mm hmm. All right. Okay. So let's go right here with can I cop? What does copyright protect? Let's just go right there. We we'll just deal with that one right there. Okay. Copyright my domain name does not protect domain names. Your original website, yes, it can be protected. Okay. Copyright is a form of intellectual property that protects original works of authors, including, there it is, literary. Let me let me make that a little bit bigger. Okay, let's make it bigger. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, I'll make it happy. All right, literary work, dramatic work, musical work, artistic work, such as poetry, movies, song, computer. Copyright does not protect, look at this, facts, ideas, systems, are methods of operation, although it might uh, may, may protect the way certain things are expressed. Okay, so that right there is uh, is just huge. And then you can go on with the logo, uh, the the titles and slogan. Look at this. Okay, this is good right here. Copyright does not protect names, titles. Oftentimes, people are like I don't want to share my book title. It doesn't protect book titles, slogan, or phrases. Now. In some cases, these things may be protected under trademark law, but not copyright law, okay? But not copyright law, all right? Okay, all right, okay. So it goes on and on, okay? And, and, and okay, like, like who can register, registering the word, okay? But this, this is so important that you understand what is protected and what can be protected, okay? All right, so... Let me go a little further now because uh, I, I, I think it's just so important because many people in the 60s, the 40s, the 50s, these people lost everything because they didn't know how to copyright. They didn't know how to copyright. So here's the deal. The more original you are, the more you're going to be able to copyright what you're doing. That's the key. That's why you see these YouTubers, these podcasters, these people just come on screen and just be themselves, okay? And 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 that's the power of where, where we live today because everything, okay, with, with the advent of AI, your original story is becoming even more sacred because AI is going to make this, make everything common, but your story is what's going to stand out and make you significant, okay? And make you significant. All righty, now let's go a little bit further here. All right. Now, when I was in law school, there was a concept that we use called IRAC, Issue, Rule, Application, Conclusion. IRAC, Issue, Rule, Application, Conclusion. Here's the deal with AI. 
there's so many new issues that are being raised. Okay, issue, uh, rule, the rule, we need to look at what the law says, okay? The issue is who owns it? Everything about AI, the questions are who owns it? That's the key question. Who can, who's going to have control? And and, 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 that's, and and when that question is answered, then you can deal with the law and then you got the application and the conclusion, okay? So let, for example, okay, Google owns YouTube right now, right? And uh, chat GPT is owned by uh, uh, Microsoft. That's it, Microsoft. I'm in a group, I'm in an AI lawyers group. And one of these, uh, the leader of the group is, has had direct contact, I believe, uh, with AI's counsel, uh, legal counsel. And so, and, and this group is, they're pretty connected also with the copyright office and a lot of people that are connected to some of the people that are really making things happen in this space. The big question is becoming, uh, if you put a creative prompt into AI and it pulls out this unique information that was crafted because you asked such a great question, who's gonna own that? Will that be yours? Will that be uh, the company's? The question is centering around that. There's no case law on it yet. It hadn't been litigated yet, but that's where we headed. It's all about control. And when it comes to this stuff, it, it, you just want to be safe, be smart, and be legally informed as much as possible by doing things such as you're doing right here. And that is uh, being on the cutting edge of what's going on. But so the issue is always going to be ownership and control. OK, the law is right now, the general rule of law is AI created content cannot be copyrighted by uh, by uh, uh, by by individuals. But 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 what comes out of it can be because it's unique. Now, the question becomes, what is the uh, companies doing? Oh, the question is, where do these companies get their information from? You see what I'm saying? Where do these companies get their information from? How does you get the information? ChatGPT now is saying that it, it, it gets its information like they call scraping, okay? It, it scrapes the internet. It scrubs the internet and just pulls all this information together. That's one way to do it. And then there's some uh, platforms that are getting it in a more permissive manner as opposed to just scraping everything that's out there. ChatGPT currently says that they don't own the information. They don't, they don't bar you from claiming ownership to what you get out of it. That's why it's called open AI, okay? All right, now, let me go a little further here. All right, I'm, I'm gonna just take a peek at my, my notes because I wanted to make sure I cover all these points here. Now, let me go into some best practices. Best practices. Here, here's some best practices. I'm going to probably give you several. Best practice is uh, be creative with your prompts. Be extremely creative with your prompts. And that's the key to getting information that you can currently copyright and use. Okay. Uh, let me give you about five ways that I use prompts. I use prompts to to edit. I use prompts to proofread. I use prompts to write product descriptions. Okay. Uh, I use I use prompts to rewrite and edit my emails. Okay. Um, I use prompts to write YouTube descriptions. You know that you you'll see in there where it says write a summary. Well, I'll go into the chat. And I'll say, I'm doing this video and I'm giving five ways to make money easy. Give me a summary in this and then I'll, and boom, I put it into the machine and I get that summary out. Have you ever seen a needed to write a summary and you only needed a, 150 characters? They say, we need 150 characters or less. Ah, I'll go into the prompt and say, write me a summary with less than 150 characters. Boom. I get it, right? Just like that. Okay. I'll give you another way. 
that I use ChatGPT and prompts, and that is to write a course summary, a course outline, okay? If I'm about to create a course, I'll use it for that. And this way, you are able to produce a lot of content, what? A lot faster, a lot faster, okay? Best practices, always issue disclosures in whatever you're doing. Always issue disclosures and disclaimers. I'm disclosing to you this, I'm disclosing to you that. Just, just make sure that you're clear on that, okay? Um, something that's very important when we're thinking about using AI is, where is this content coming from? And if you want to know where content is coming from, then either ask Google, ask ChatGPT where they're com coming from, or, or, or Claude, I think that's another popu popular one, and Gemini, I think it's Gemini. That's Google software. Am I going too fast? Am I going too fast? Okay, all right. So there's ChatGPT, there, there, there's Gemini. ChatGPT is it's Microsoft. Gemini is Google, that's Google's AI machine. And then you got Claude. I'm not sure who, who Claude is by, okay? And then there are all these other people that, that are creating these different apps and machines. The question is, what you wanna do, the biggie right here, is what are their terms and conditions of use? Terms and condition of use is the key thing. And then the next question is, you will always wanna look at when you read through these terms of condition of use, and, and, and what I'm going to encourage you to do is something that I got to get better at doing. And I sure hate to admit that, that I sometimes just click the little clicker, but you can't be clicking the little clicker in today's way things are now because all these programs are sending these updates. Like I just saw one today, Microsoft talking about uh, Adobe talking about it's time to give permissions. It's time to give permission. Well, what they're asking you to do is waive something or give them permission to say they're not going to be liable for something or that you're going to hold them harmless if you pull some information from their site and you and it's incorrect and you find yourself in court and it costs you money, you ain't going to go back and sue chat GPT because they're going to say you signed this agreement online. Okay? Now, Another best practice thing just to be aware of, and that's this, e-signatures are real signatures, okay? All right, e-signature is a real signature. So just cause it's an e-signature don't mean that it's not a real signature, all right? Next best practice here in this area is if you are running a business and you are dealing with other people's personal information, you want to be careful where you put that information. You want to be careful how you put that information in your computer because many of these softwares now are just anything. It's almost like if you breathe, it knows how many breaths you took in the last five minutes because they're trying to read our minds so that they can put commercial activity before us. Okay, so with that in mind, if, you, if you're running a business, you need an AI business policy. That's something we you need to have in place. A policy in place saying my company use AI and we use it to this extent, blah blah. You know, and uh, 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 we we don't we, we we will not be held liable. You know, unless there's some type of intentional wrongdoing. But you want to disclose that you're using AI in your business. Okay. All right. I said read emails and websites because they are real. Real, 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 um, real signatures. Okay, um, okay. Another biggie right here. Be careful connecting your Google account or your Yahoo account or whatever email account you're using. Be careful connecting that to, let's just say, ChatGPT or or Gemini or Claude or whatever. The other day I got this inbox, it says from chat, GPT says, we would like to connect to your Google account. Well, the reason why they want to connect to my Google account is so they can have access to all my Google data, right? And so that they could better, and they'd always, they always say, so that we can better serve you and help you become more informed. They make you feel so good. They ain't gonna do no harm at all. And next thing you know, 
their subscription has gone up and you're subscribing and you're having to pay more because they got all your stuff and feeding it back to you. So be careful of accepting or giving permissions for third-party apps to be used in connection with your email providers and so forth. Be very, very careful of that, okay? Uh, I gave permission to ChatGPT to use my Google account and I was like, holy snap, how do I undo that? How do I undo that? And so I was in this legal group and they they didn't have an answer for it. They said it could be difficult. It could be hard. And I'm like, uh-uh, it ain't going to be different. It ain't going to be hard. I said, chat GPT, how do I revoke? How do I revoke uh, this, this session? And you know what? Uh, it, um, just a moment here. Uh, uh, W-I-L-C-A-L-L-A-L-A-P. I revoked it. I was able to revoke it because I asked ChatGPT and it told me, it says, go right into your Google account, click on Google security. And then you said, you'll see this drop down of all the third party apps and go there and click on it and hit revoke. And I did it and it disconnected ChatGPT from my Google account. Okay. So that's something to be very, very much aware of. Okay. All right. Let me give you another best practice. Now, this one right here is just... You're a Google user, right? You use Gmail, right? Okay, if you use Gmail, you definitely want to see this and you want to be aware of this because this is huge right about here. This is huge right about here. Okay, let's see here. All right, now I'm gonna share my screen when I do this because I want to uh, I want to uh, show you something, okay? All right, I'm about to share my screen. And this is... Ma'am, I'm a lawyer and I got kind of taken on this one. When you're creating documents in Google Drive, you see right here, I'm in my Google Drive. Do you see this right here? Ownership literally means owner, right? Okay, that's very, very important right there. Very, very important right here. That owner right there. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, create a document and you working with virtual assistants and you're working with a team, then you want to be the one to originate the mother file or the main file, okay? Or you wanna be the one showing up right here, okay? Then you can share it with them over here. You know, you'll see shared with. So in your Google Drive, you wanna hold ownership of that file. Even though when you share it with somebody, they can copy it and download it. But if they are the owner of that file and, and they share it with you and you hadn't copied it or downloaded it, then you could get blocked out of a file that you paid somebody to create for you. And, okay, I'm, I'm, that's very, very big right there. So the bottom line is, if you're going to work in Google and you're going to have a team or somebody working with you and you say, okay, I want you to create a, a manuscript for me. I want to, let's work on this manuscript. It needs to start off with you as owner. And you want to ask and make sure that people know that up front when you first get started with them. That way it don't become difficult later or awkward when you say, uh, I want to own my files. I want to, well, it's going to be awkward after if, if, if you done been down the road three or four months. Okay. Very, right. very big right there. Okay. Um, Ma'am, I think I have uh, hit all the best practices that I have and that I can be aware of. The other thing I would say is stay connected with legal. Stay connected with somebody or some source that's able to bring you updates periodically, preferably about every month right now, the way things are going because things are moving pretty, pretty fast. But I don't think that AI is anything that we need to be afraid of. Uh, I think it's something that we have to pretty much embrace because it is what it is and companies are using it and it's uh, almost, it's common. It reminded me of a, of a, a thought that I heard the other day. Uh, this gentleman was talking about, he was a pastor of a church and um, they didn't have a piano at the time when the church had gotten started and boy, they brought in a new piano. And then uh, as a result of them bringing in that piano, guess what happened? It split the church. It split the church because over the piano. 
Another issue that this pastor was saying that the, the choir uh, wanted to get some new robes. And there was a big old discussion over the new robe, the color of the robes. It caused a split, the color of the robes. Here's the deal. No, anytime something new is brought into the picture, there's always going to be the left and the right. There's going to be those who are going to be the leapers and those who are going to be the limpers. And there's going to be those who are going to jump out there fast and those who are not going to jump out there. In this particular case right here, I think there's a lot of opportunity out there for those who want to get ahead of the game and maximize and be on the cutting edge. And I think that's what this is all about. You can really do a lot with your writings now a lot faster, a lot more efficiently. I think... Uh, AI is similar to Amazon, in my opinion, and that is Amazon kind of like level the playing field for authors and writers through Kindle Direct Publishing. AI is leveling the playing field for creatives who want to create content fast and uh, build a substantial brand. Only caution that I would say is stay connected to legal, keep keep up on the legal thing, and you should be fine. Okay. So that's, that's the uh, extent of AI is your book or brand of business protected. And you should always do an intellectual property audit with an attorney. Just have an IP attorney audit your uh, business and, and periodically to make sure you have all the forms, documents in place, and you should be able to uh, be safe. And okay. Any questions, biggest takeaway, what stood out for you? Um. Well, my main concern was about the the legal rights um, of the AI. So I definitely feel better about that. Like, because I wanted to use the feature to, like for my word count to expand, um, which is would be under Ghostwriter. And I was like, well, wait a minute now, if I use that feature, you know, are they gonna like take away, you know, or be able to claim? So I'm definitely feeling better about that. Um, the fact, the thing about disclosing the use of AI. So if I do that for them to, to edit, use an AI to edit and proofread the rewrite and edit all that kind of stuff, what, are, where am I supposed to put that? I would put it either in, you can put it in the front of the book or in the back of the book, as long as it's in the book. Uh, Stating would, that. Uh, to, uh to a minor percentage or to uh, to a small degree, AI was used to edit, proofread, and to uh, ghostwrite a small portion. I don't know if I would say AI was used to ghostwrite. I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't want to no, say that. No, well, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Un un unless unless it's more than fifty percent of the book. If it was more than fifty percent. Uh -huh. And it is not that amount. So I would just say it, AI was used to edit, to proofread, and to um, to make this content flow. You know, yeah. The um, maybe the rewrite part. Yeah, uh, yeah. but that that's a small percentage, though. You know, because I consider that editing. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where if, if the grammar is not correct, it's going to be edited to correct it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let me so, so tell me exactly what was your question? Okay, what what what's your question? The question you wanted to ask is uh, how do you issue a disclaimer that you used AI for a uh, how, how do I disclose that? How do I disclose, okay? Yeah, that's C L O S. Uh-huh. The use of AI to edit. The use of AI to edit, uh-huh. Revise. Proofread. Proof. Yeah. Um, uh, proofread. Uh huh. Uh, revise. Uh, revise, I guess. Uh huh. How do I use the use of AI to edit, proofread, revise? Uh huh. And what? That, that should be it because I don't think, I think edit is, well, ghost read, gross write. I, I don't know because ghostwrite, the purpose of ghostwrite is to expand, but isn't that also editing? I don't know. Let, let's say, let's say, let's say, how do I disclose the use of AI to edit, proofread, revise, and slightly, S L I G H T L I, expand the content of my book? Is it, would, would yeah. That, would that be accurate? Yes. 
content of my manuscript without doing what? Without saying that the AI wrote my book. Without saying the ghost writing. Without saying that portions were ghost written. Right. Okay. All right, let's go for it. There we go. Let's see what happens. Disclosing the use of edited proofreading and slightly expanding your manuscript can be done in a transparent and straightforward manner without implying that portions were ghostwritten. Here's a proper way to phrase the disclosure. Disclosure of assistance of AI. In the preparation of this manuscript, I utilize AI tools to assist with editing, proofreading, revision, and minor content expansion. Uh, this tool help improve clarity, grammar, and overall readability. All substantive ideas and creative content remain my own. I like it. Yes. There you go. Screenshot. Okay. okay you got it? Yep. Already did. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Okay. Oh. All right. So, and that will go in the back, the very back of the book. Put it in the back, front, whatever. You just, whatever, wherever you want to put it. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. Oh, okay. I guess a. That was my main concern, really. Okay. So what was your biggest takeaway? What, what, oh, oh, you already told me that. Okay. And you've taken, your biggest takeaway was concerning whether or not you could own the copyright to what you put into AI. And if right. you asked AI to expand or to assist with the content, how do you disclose it without, right. you know, how do you remain transparent without feeling like you saying that the book was written by AI? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. All right. Um, and I guess a little bit off off topic a little bit concerning the word count. Um, I just recently found out um, just by Googling that the um, word count, and I think it may be falling under categories because I'm writing my story, but I made it based on a true story. So I don't know if that necessarily falls under um, autobiography anymore or, you know, the category. And then category determines the, the word count that's required. Is that in uh, Kindle, direct publishing? Yes. Uh, well, uh, category determines the word count? I'm, I'm not sure. I As think the autobiography, uh, biography, with, because of it being based on a true story instead of a, just a full-blown, um, I don't know how that's, is that still fall under nonfiction? I mean, it is nonfiction. It's true. It's based on a true story. Okay. But instead of saying, I did this and that, I have a character now who did those things. Oh, and your question is whether or not this is fiction or nonfiction? Uh, uh, autobiography? It, it is still nonfiction because the story, it is based on the true story. I'm just using a character instead of me. And your question is what? Does that still fall under, I know it's still nonfiction, but does it count considering um, if that's a difference between autobiography or biography? Uh, uh, I think it doesn't it, matter. Yeah, right, 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 right. I'm not sure if that's a big significant portion, whether it's biography or autobiography. Biography is just written by someone else. Autobiography is written by your, you, okay? Yeah. Uh, it is being written by you, uh, but you have a character that's kind of representing you. Right. I, I see it as an autobiography. I would, okay. I, but I don't think it's that, in that much of a guess that that is that is that significant. It's still nonfiction. Okay. So then the category to categorize for word count that's required. When I Googled, um, I think autobiographies and biographies, it was coming out to like sixty to eighty thousand words. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that and see, and that's going to be based on what Google or that's traditional publishing. You are self-publishing, and because you are self-publishing, those standards or guidelines doesn't necessarily apply to you. Okay. So I okay. definitely wouldn't be trying to necessarily do that. 
unless you just want that kind of word count. You don't have to do that at all. Yeah, because my concern was, you know, originally we did, what we discussed was that you didn't want a book to be too long because of a person's attention span. Right. So then I said, okay, well, we're gonna if number letters if it has to be that big, uh, that's a concern. No, it's totally up to you. Zero short reads are a whole category. Zero to thirty thousand words. I definitely wouldn't be looking to go over 30,000 words. 20 to 30,000 words is a reasonable length book. Okay, you're going okay. to get 50 to 60,000. You're getting into a long, long book. Yeah, and I don't want to do that. Um, I, I would disregard that. So now <laughs> my concern at this point then, even though I'm going to need ghostwriting to, the reason I want like ghostwriting is to help me connect my dots. So uh -huh. some of my sentences are choppy. Mm -hmm. Even though I guess editing will do that. You're going to love what you get out of uh, AI. Okay. Um, so now <laughs> I'm at like 20. I have my word count right now. is like 20,000 for chapter one. <laughs> 20, oh, uh, 20,000 for chapter one. Okay. So I think I'm going to have to go in and just break it up. How many chapters you got? Where are you going? Um, Four, five, five. So you, so you would. So how many, how many words do you have in the other four chapters? The others are not that big. Okay. They're not. I would. Like I would maybe four thousand words, stuff oh, like that. Okay. I would. I would go in. What are you using? Chat GPT? Uh, Claude? I haven't done. No, I haven't used either or any of them yet. I've only just have my stuff in there. Okay. <clears throat> my recommendation would be. Go into ChatGPT, and here's a key prompt that I want you to use. Take on the persona of a masterful storyteller and writer. That's the way you talk to, that's the, way, that's the way you do it. You tell it, like when I do research and I'm on ChatGPT, I say, take on the persona of an IP lawyer. Take on the persona of a excellent editor or take on the persona of a masterful storyteller and rewrite this paragraph. Okay. That's the way you got to talk to it, okay? Okay. So what you want to do now is put all of that content that you got in a document, boom, and save the original that you put in there. All right. Then go into ChatGPT and say, Rewrite this paragraph and make it shorter. Rewrite this paragraph and, you know, shorten this. Say the same thing shorter, okay? Make this flow. Connect all of this together. And, be, and you just sit down and just, and you know, and begin to really work through it. You might want to look at Gemini. That's Google's. I've not used Gemini, but you might want to look at Gemini or you might want to look at something called Claude. I haven't used Claude, but I've heard my copywriter use it. I've heard lawyers, a lot, you know, some law groups use it. C-L-A-U-D-E, I believe, Claude. Okay, that's a that's supposed to be a good writing app for uh, writing. And then there's ChatGPT. Those are the three biggies out there. But you're, yeah. gonna, you're gonna love it. It's gonna read great and you're gonna own it and it's yours and you don't have all this foolish, all this to fear. And you're gonna be, and you can be done in a, you're gonna be done in short notice. Okay, I have to be <laughs> because um, it's due. It's pretty much due. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. So if it will do the proofreading, will it also tell me like, will it give me feedback because I've added poetry in there? Will it give me feedback on that? That's like a big concern of mine. Will it give you feedback on the poetry? Yeah. It'll give you what you ask it for. Okay. You want feedback on it. Write this more emotionally. Write this in the active voice. You want to tell it. You just got to give it those commands. Tell me what you think of this. Okay. And then just you just you just work through all that like this, just like that. Okay. All right. All right. 
Are you glad you came in to the training tonight? Yes. <laughs> All right. So I have the a little more, I'm more at ease now about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, you know, I'm I'm down to crunch time, <laughs> as you called it on me, that I would be. And um, you know, these things popped up and I'm like, oh, okay, this is an alternative. This is an option versus like paying an arm and a leg for somebody to rush and get this out for me. You're incredibly right. Well, I want to show you something, but I'll stop the recording and then uh, be done, okay? This is going to conclude our training on AI and authorship. Is your book, brand, and business protected?